Welcome, this is going to be our lecture video for April 1st. We're going to be doing a step-by-step -step binder lesson about how to graph uh, something called linear inequalities. So either take these notes on a separate piece of paper or print off this document. Here we go. Put your name up there. Today I will be Key South. I'm recording this on the 1st and write a few of their fifth or sixth period on there. Okay, so sketch a graph of each linear inequality. So step one, what we want to do is if the equation isn't already, we want to change the equation into a y something mx plus b Form. We don't say y equals mx plus b because that's not an equal sign in the middle, that's an inequality. So this could be uh, a less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to. But what matters is that the y is by itself, and the right hand side looks like mx plus b. All right, step two. Um, well, there's an important note here. When you're changing the equation into that form, let's uh, remind ourselves. Um, here, I'll just do it down here. I went too far. If you multiply or divide by a negative, flip the inequality. So we learned this back when we were solving inequalities. It's very important when graphing too, or your graph will come out wrong. Uh, if when you are changing your equation into the mx plus b form, if you don't flip the inequality when you need to. All right, uh, step two. So we don't need to do step one. Uh, question number one is already in mx plus b form. I can clearly see what the slope and the y-intercept are. So step two is place a point at your y-intercept. So let's look at problem number one. The y-intercept is a one, so I'm gonna put a point right there on the one. And that's all for step two. Step three, we want to use the slope to add in as many additional points as possible. That means going both uh, to the left and the right of our y-intercept. So here our slope is negative two. I'm gonna turn that into a negative two over one so that I can see my rise over run. Negative two means go down two. Positive one means go right one. And I've got another point. I can continue that pattern of going down two, right one to add in additional points on this line. Or I can reverse it, and instead of going down two, right one, I can go up two, left one to get a few more points. And those are all of the points that are possible uh, on this graph. So I'm just gonna add in a note here, left and right of the y-intercept. Okay, now step four. We want to connect the dots with either a solid or a dashed line. And what decides whether it's going to be solid or dashed, you don't get to just pick, it's the inequality symbol. And so let's make a little chart for which inequality symbol is going to be solid, which inequality symbol is going to be dashed. So if the inequality symbol includes the or equal to part, so if it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're going to go solid. 
All right. And if it doesn't have that or equal to, then we want to go dashed. All right, and that's because we're trying to decide if the line itself should be included as solutions to the inequality. If it doesn't have the or equal to, then when you, a point immediately on the line does not satisfy the inequality. Okay, so look at that key. Let's go back up to our problem. We have just a simple less than. So I'm going to connect the dots that I've drawn with a dotted line. Okay. On to step five. Let's see it's a different color here. All right, in step five, we want to shade either above or below the line. All right, so any line is going to have an above and a below. Just go to any point on that line. If you go up, you're on the above side. And if you go straight down, you're on the below side. All right, and we've got a key. We don't just get to pick which side we shade. It depends on the, uh, what our inequality symbol is again. But this time, it's a different grouping. All right, if it's a less than or a less than or equal to, we're going to shade below. If it's a greater than or a greater than or equal to, we're going to shade above. So let's see which one we have. We've got a less than, so I go to any point, I go down to get to the below side, and I want to shade that whole side. So I go right up to the line. And what we're doing here is we are shading all of the ordered pairs that make the inequality true. Because there's a lot of ways to make an inequality true. You just have to make sure that one side isn't bigger than the other side. So it makes sense that about half of our graph is going to make this true, since about half of numbers are bigger than other numbers. OK, and then we're going to let's write a step for how we check. We're going to step six, check with a point well inside the shaded region. So don't pick a point on the line. We want to pick a point off the line in the shaded region. And that's going to make sure we, that we shaded the correct side. So here I could just pick, you know, the origin is in our shaded region. I could pick negative one comma negative one. I guess I'll do that. So that negative one is less than two plus one negative one is less than one negative one is less than one that checks out so we double checked with this point right here all right all right let's practice all our steps again on problem number two here it's already in mx plus b form so i can just put a point in my y-intercept of five the slope is two which i can treat as a two over one i want to go up two over one and add in a point that's just a little off our graph there, or I can go down to left one to get some more points. Down to left one, down to left one, down to left one, down to left one. I'm going to connect these up with a dotted line. All right, I can look at my little key right here. It says that these symbols get a dashed line. Dash dotted, same thing. Uh, then this is a less than, so I'm going to check my other key to see which side I shade. Yep, less than, shade the lower side or below. And so I'm shading in all of the ordered pairs that make that inequality true. Let's check with our origin, zero comma zero is zero, less than two times zero plus five is zero less than five, it checks out. All right, so we checked with that point right there.
practice again with number three. Y-intercept of four, I put a point at four. The slope is negative eight over five, so I want to go down five, right eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Rise over run, so I go down eight over five. Those are the only two points that fit on there. Next, I pick solid or dashed. Uh, I look at this, yep, this one needs a solid line. So let me go get a solid line to connect these two points. And then which side do I shade? I look at that inequality again. I'm gonna shade below on this one, which is this side over here. Okay. Uh, and now there's one more kind of peculiar case. And uh, so I said every line has an above and below. That's not entirely true. There's one type of line that doesn't have an above and a below, and that's a vertical line. All right, so here we've got x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I want to dot in that line, y equals, or x equals negative 3. It's a vertical line that crosses my x-axis at negative 3. I still want to follow the same rules for how I connect that line. This one gets a solid line. So let me make sure I've got my solid line. But now I should shade above, but there is no above, so I shade to the right. So this one's going to get shaded over here. With a solid line right there. So here we will write that. For x inequalities, if it's x is less than or x is less than or equal to, think less than left. We want to shade left. And if it's an x greater than, x greater than or equal to, we want to shade right. And if you look at the inequality, it's kind of like it's pointing to the side that needs to be shaded. This looks like they're pointing left. These look like they're pointing right. Okay, there's two more there for you to try, but we'll end the video here. Have a good rest of your day.